Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. We just thank you for our time together. And just, Lord, you know the room. You know those that will uh, watch this, uh, even downloading video and, and uh, uploading that. And, Father, we just pray that, that you would just uh, cause the ministry of life to flow in words of exhortation, words of inspiration, words of, of death, seeds sown in good soil. Father, we thank you, Father, for just the power of your word, even that, that, that is at work here. And Father, for the truths in practical ways, even for us to be able to grasp these things, understand them, and bring application to our lives. So, Father, let your anointing just be here for each of us to receive the portion, that which you have for us, mm -hmm. to cause me to speak as an oracle of God with prophetic utterance and with your heart of compassion. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. amen. I, uh, so I, I thought, um, I've been on this journey a, a, a good while now. Uh, so I've just celebrated 25 years as senior pastor at the current church that I'm at. Here in San Angelo, we planted up here. Um, I had been their youth pastor in the late 80s, early 90s. I, those, those years should have counted double. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, from, from there, went to Central Texas, pastored out there, planted a couple other churches. So um, I came from the business world, raised in my mom and dad's, you know, construction company. And then I went off on my own and yeah. left them, went commercial build, built a lot of major, you know, big buildings. and and. Uh, the last job I was on before going to full time in Central Texas, we had probably 200 some subs on the job, uh, nine buildings going up, fire training command at Goodfellow Air Force Base. So, so I came from that kind of high pace, very intense, you know, uh, world of construction, and uh, and I moved to this little town in Lockhart, Texas. With uh, they told me that they had 35 members. I feel like, you know, they counted pregnant women twice and a few cats and dogs. You know, they just, you know, they were the work. You know? and, uh, and so we showed up, and I, and I went to a culture and environment where the pastor did everything. I'm like, so who mows the grass? Well, you do now. Well, who, who cleans the building? Well, you do now. And it was just that thing. So, so you know, I've, I've pastored in, in small environments, and, and uh, I was going to do something specific to the culture of growth, because I just believe in growth. Mm. I believe God gives multiplication. God gives growth. That is our promise. Ephesians 4, even with the, when he's talking about the five ascension order uh, leaders equipping the saints for the work of ministry, it's that we might grow. Yeah, yeah. It's about growth. And uh, I was sharing with someone, a, a young man out there, and he's in a program, and he's talking about that he's just growing. I said, I'm still growing. Yeah, it's, a, it's about lifelong learning. It's about the growth that God gives and uh, continuing to expand and allow uh, even the depth of our relationship with him. Hey, if the Apostle Paul was always striving for that, who do we think we are that we don't have? Amen. Amen. So, so we're all on just this journey together. So maybe some things that I can share will help. Um, in 97, went back to San Angelo, take our our, uh, our senior pastor role there at the, at the church. And um, uh, we've gone from, oh, I think that we would probably evaluate probably half a million dollars, you know, just no, no building, you know, in, in smaller church off, off the beaten path. And uh, and now we're, uh, I've, I've built two of the buildings, and this last one's four acres under roof. Wow. 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 <laughs> and uh, so, so it's, it's uh, yeah, we're, we're, they just did an evaluation. Uh, the ministry is now worth 26 mil. Wow. And uh, we started charter schools 14 years ago, and we're nearly at 4,000 students in five cities. Wow. Uh, 500 and something employees there. So total nearly 600 employees. And so we have that. We also have rental properties, investments, RV park, all kinds of stuff. And my wife, my wife runs all that. I have enough to do. Just <laughs> but uh, can anything but, good come out of San Angelo? Uh, come on, come on. <laughs> and then with Amazing. the mission side, I don't know if you heard, but I now <laughs> am the the CMM director of India. <laughs> come on, have you ever been bought and told? <laughs> Told to take India. So, you know, so here we go. 
I need some help. <laughs> we'll have a sign up in the back. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, so so through this though, there 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 is that growth and there's that tension and there there's a whole lot that I that I have learned and I and, and so I'm going to try and break it down because what does a healthy church culture even look like? Yeah, right? good. And and there's a couple of key passages and of course you can start there in the Book of Acts in yeah. the beginning. Because you look at the, the law first, and you look at some of those those things of, that was being said in the beginning there, and you, you kind of capture that. Um, I don't I don't know about you, but you know, because Peter stands up, he preaches the gospel. You know, he think about where he's come from. I don't have a whole lot of time for that, but but just think about Peter's life, and here he is now making this declaration, preaching the gospel. But at one point, he, he stops, and, it, and, it, and there's things that capture me at times when I'm reading the Bible. I'm going, why? This was one of those. It says here in, in Acts chapter 2, starting there in verse 4, it says, And with many of the words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. I mean, you believe it. It was perverse in those days. So he's but with many of the words he testified saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. And they gladly received his word and were baptized, and that day about three thousand souls. Come on, culture yeah. growth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like to see some more of that. Yeah. 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 People need Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and with that, I had to ask. What are these other words? It doesn't tell us. But something significant happened because the church continued to grow. Because it says that God kept adding to them daily. And so through that, what took place? And, I, and, and so I got, a, I got a picture of this. So think about... Um, if, if you're, and, and, and again, I, I may have to preface this for American football because we may have some real good. football people in here. You know, my son Lane, some of you got to hear him yesterday. He 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 plays real football, soccer. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but but American football. Think about this. You're in the you're in the stands. You're you're looking down on the field, and there's the holy huddle. They're 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 in the huddle. And you know something's being said in the huddle. Right. There's a play being called in the huddle. Amen. But I mean, you know, we don't get to we don't get into the huddle. It's it's for the huddle. But you know what? If we want to know what's being said in the huddle, just watch. Because they're going to come out of that. Amen. And do it. And yeah. do it. Come on. And that's what happens here. It says from this place. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine in teaching. The foundation of the word is so vital in this. And from that, it says, and then they, uh, in fellowship, koinia. This is really more of where communion comes from. And that kind of, of, of community being built, breaking bread from house to house. Community, 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 community. Life has to be done in community. And in Western culture, we have so far moved, removed ourselves from that. Yes. With garages and fences and you know, just all this individualized stuff to where we have to be so intentional. And we don't do life together. We have seminaries, you know, so they go and they get an education, get a degree, and yet they can't do the stuff. I see that, in, that same thing in education. Mm -hmm. I've got people that they got all kinds of degrees. They're lifetime, you know, students, and they got they just keep adding to it, and they still can't teach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they, there's something that 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 we've got to we got to get this that you've got to do life together, right? And then in prayers, but that word prayers is not petitionary prayer. It's not supplement, uh, a supplication prayer. This, this is about worship. Worship. And so from, from us, from our leadership, when we're meeting as elders, listen, <laughs> is there a business side of the church? Yes. But 
God help us. Stop making about the financials every board meeting. Jesus wants to do something in our church and in our communities. And we need to be together. So we started, we, we just, years ago, we said, okay, we're going to revamp this. We're going to turn this thing to where it's about us. We're loving one another. There's some teaching goes on. We, we, want, we want the communion. We eat a meal together. Something powerful happens. We That's share good. a meal together. Yeah. And then we worship together. Yeah. We minister one to another. You create healthy culture when you invite God into it. Yeah. Yeah. Your home, same way. Being intentional in your homes. I, I love going to Israel and taking folks to Israel and, and uh, a few trips back, one of my elders, we, we, and, and I love doing one of the uh, Shabbat meals and, and in a home with, with, a, with a family, a uh, Messianic Jewish family. And, and as they're going around and as they're moving through that process and the, and the kids are standing up and speaking blessings over their mom and, and their gratitude and, and declaring, I look over there, I mean, they're a mess, they're bawling. Why? Because of the family. Oh, yeah. In Jewish culture, you look at some of those things. And, and for us, we get so busy and we lose that. A big part of me uh, kind of coming full circle and getting my life on, in a better place from uh, just the busyness of ministry in life was when I, when I started that shift and I started having family nights and being intentional and not talk about church and not talk about school. I got three daughters in education. So <laughs> you show up, what are they talking about? You know, what went on at school? What's happening? And, and, and I've got the, the other side of the family that's in, in ministry. It's like, what are you going to talk about? All the ministry. No! We ain't talking about that. We're talking about us. And so you have to be intentional. So let me let me let me move through this. So you got to know your responsibility as a leader. I don't have time to, to go into all the details, of it, but for me, I had to define this. I had to get this. I had to just just say, okay, what what am I supposed to do? And I and I broke it down in this way that I'm going to lead. Yep. I'm going to feed. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to develop, and I'm going to protect. Lead, feed, intercede, develop, and protect. And so it helped me, and that was me. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to take that. What is, what is what in your role, role, what is that as a leader in your different areas? What does that look like? Find that. For us, in our mission, vision, values. So whether it's in my school, whether it's in our church, we, we, we work those out and and. You know, strat ops and having having guys in like Michael Murphy that can help you with that and, and move through a process of that. Um, we've worked through some of that. We're part of Gateway Network with our church, and so with those those guys on the network side that are trained in that and being able to come in from the outside and help do that. I've done that for some others, but for for, for my organizations, I don't do that. <laughs> I have outside people come, and they see things that you won't see. <laughs> There's stuff you're walking by every day that you don't you no longer even see it. Come on, haven't you done that? Yeah. I remember one of my construction jobs, you go into the office and you go into the coffee room there to get your coffee and, and for whatever reason, you know, they had a cleaning company and there was this dead cockroach that laid there on the floor and it laid there for, for days and still wasn't cleaned up. And one of the guys in the office built a little homemade cross. <laughs> Get this. The cross was swept up in the cockroach. <laughs> Sometimes we walk by stuff and it's like, we don't see it anymore. So we got we to gotta fix some things and sometimes you need some people to come alongside you from the outside to help you do that. From a marketing side, you know, they have a phrase. It's hard to read the outside of the of the jar from being inside the jar. So you, you need outside help in those kinds of things. So now let me let me get to this. That's where I want to go. How much time we got? Where am I at? I gotta hurry. What I have about 12 minutes? Alright. Alright. So um, 
for me, I, I started looking just in general, and and um, and I like it whenever I feel like the Lord gives me some practical things or or um, natural things that, that translate over to and help. Me. And I looked up at kind of creation, how he even in the beginning he made you know so so he, the created part of man. He was a spirit king in the beginning. That's what he did first, was spirit. That creative side, if you're going to lead an organization, lead your family, there, there has to be a certain spiritual aspect of you connecting to and understanding that first and foremost, you're a spirit being. You're an awesome spirit being with infinite potential, as my friend Jack Wallace used to say. An awesome spirit being with infinite potential. And it is a, as, as connecting to the spiritual part of this, because any, any organization, it, 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 ha, it should have a life. Some of them are dead, they just don't know they're dead. But, but it should have a life. And with that, there's a DNA that's made up of that. I believe in that first creating man in his image and his likeness, we're a spirit being. Right. And so as that, being a spirit, then we, we have to start thinking from that place then where we form mission, vision, values. We start thinking about um, what is our why? What is our why? And, and, I, I, and I, I just felt like that, again, I just went to the Bible. But we know the, the, the what is to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, right? Yeah. And so there, there's a what. It's already defined. I don't have to make something up. In our church, I'm like, how many think the Bible's okay still? Yeah. <laughs> you just go to the Word. So here's our why. Well, well, then why? What's our why? Because, because if you can discover, okay, what is that why that's there? It'll help you connect and give yourself to it if it's if it's defined properly. And I believe God defined it very clear. The why is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus paid for you. We cannot take that for granted. We cannot dumb that down. Because of that price that was paid, all the world should know. Why? Because he loves everyone. Right? Every person matters. We say this regularly on Sundays. You matter to God. You matter to us. You matter. So we just built it in a in kind of a, a you know, where where we can capture that. We have you matter shirts and all the other stuff and everything that, that in that. But but with that, so our, we get our what, our why, and then you start breaking out your how. What are those what are those core values? And and so you start it, it because your core values really form in you more of your how. Where you have core values. So when you think about, you know, with, with our core values, and, and uh, I may not go through all of them, but we have five. And with those, it, first and foremost, it is, it is living the spirit-filled life. You're not going to do this if you're not hooked to the source. Yeah. Otherwise, you just got dead religion. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're just doing principles, you're just doing the arm of the flesh. Yeah. Now, I, I got I to gotta stay hooked to the source. This is about spirit life, again. It's the spirit, right? <laughs> and then faith, man, I'm telling you, we, we get out there. We do some crazy stuff. And so you go through it, living the generous life, serving, all, all of the, our core values in that. But, but then from there, think of, so you think about your spirit and think about the spiritual side of this. We're first created as a spirit being, but then now that spirit had to have a structure. So it then... Later says, he formed man out of the dust of the ground. What do you do? Put that in him. So now, he's got a nurse suit. Now, this is before the fall, guys. Right? And so he's got a nurse suit so that he can function in this realm. Mm -hmm. Now, it ended up in decay because of sin, but it's still a nurse suit, and it's still a spirit. Now, we know that in the beginning, once sin came in, that disconnect in the spirit man digress, cease to be active. You die. Well, but that's what he said. The day you eat of this, you will die. Well, he did. Spiritually. 
So that's why in, throughout the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was always coming upon them in that way. Mm. Now we got it within us. If you're born again, child of the living God, mm. baptized in the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden now that spiritual life is there, but we still got to function in a structure. So I, I began to realize, okay, for anything healthy, it, it, it needs the Spirit. It's got to have life. And you got to have creativity, and you got to have room for that. you got to make room for that. Listen, guys, a lot of us in our churches, we got creatives. We have, we have idea people. We have those that, that and we got to make room. And you give them room in that and let those ideas flow. Begin to, begin to give some direction to that, guide that, develop that, help that. And from that spirit, it's in a structure. Your governance in your organization matters. Healthy governance matters. I used to not care anything about it. I mean, you know, we, we had a board. You know, we did the, okay, the IRS requires this deal. Um, now, the church had elders. I, I inherited them. I got, I got some elders in here. I got to behave. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and I was missing that a lot of years. I was, I, it was routine. And it, and it took me a while to, to begin to realize how valuable the structure was. Mm-hmm. On the school side, we grew by over 20% student growth last year. And so for our organization at the size that we already were, you know, when you grow by 20%, now you're at nearly 4,000 students. Right. With all the new employees, all the new administration at the district office, and, and you, you add a bunch of new, that's a challenge. That can jack your culture up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Too much new, too fast, you got to be on top of it. That 3,000 that was added, I promise you, giving themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to fellowship, to breaking breads, and to worship, they were on top of it. Mm-hmm. They were giving themselves in this thing to make sure that the culture stays healthy. I've seen different cultures turn toxic. And, 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 and it can happen from a spiritual side. It can happen from a lack of structure. And, and so we, even on our school side, we had to go through. We're, we're having to, we, we did our org chart. We did alignments. You know, when you're smaller and you're moving through growth, you, you know, some of us will wear multiple hats. But as you grow, alignments are vital. So... These areas of ministry, even if somebody's having to wear a couple hats, that you, you should align that. My most effective teachers are when they have less preps. If they're having to prep for a class every day, if they can just do math, they're on their game. If they're having two preps, that's possible, but what alignments do they have? Are they close enough? But you start giving them more than that, it gets watered down. They can't do it at that. And so alignments, even in your ministry or your organization, you've got to look at that. What does that look like in the structure of it? I gotta I gotta move on. The soul of it. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, right? There is something that is needed for us in this area to, to have a good understanding and to find that healthy place. For the soul of if, if you're in your church, in your family, in your life, if you're not having some fun, there's a problem. If it's if it's the grind, it used to, before COVID, we could get by with some of the grind. But you're not people people just aren't into that now. Coming out of COVID, it the the, the cultural shift that it's happened. Now when I think of health, I'm thinking of two things. Two primary things. Not just the health of your intake, what you eat, how you, you know, those, those kind of things, and I'll talk about the soul in a minute. But there's also a level of what I think sometimes is getting missed in this current culture when people talk about health. Street. The Bible has a lot to say about strength. Strong men in tough times. In the day of adversity, what's going to happen? 
can you move through that and walk out the other side? I have faced, man, I, I, I got more battle scars, more crazy stuff that's happened and accusations and some of my guys, you know, I tell you, I mean, it, it just ain't good. I mean, it, I, it's crazy, some of the stuff, uh, you know. You, you, you know, I, I, I have a public school that's privately run. That's charter school. You become a target. They don't like it. Polit politics get involved in. It, 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 this thing, I went from just fighting some, somewhat just some normal spiritual battles and things that you do to a whole different kind of level and, and those kind of things coming at us. I have had to learn to be strong in the Lord in the power of his mind. Mm -hmm. We need some strength, some backbone. <laughs> Paul said, some stones. <laughs> to be able to, 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 to stand in that day of adversity. Well, in the same way in your soul, in your mind, your will, and your emotions, you need strength mm -hmm. for health. Yes, it is about the renewing of the mind. It is about some of those, those, those intakes and those kinds of things. But there is things that we are going to face and move through. There's testings. There's obstacles. There's a real enemy out there. And you've got to learn to be able to do warfare. Not in the flesh, but fighting a good fight of faith. Using the authority, the blood of Jesus, the power of his name. Those things that have been given to us. So our soul, it's vital that that, that part is, is looked at in an organization. The soul of the organization and, and the, the emotions of it. Do people like showing up and working together? What's that chemistry look like? Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the mental attitude in, in, in that organization? And you can interject things that, that create that. I shared this just recently with some of my, my principals because right now in education, boy, the teachers are really struggling some things. Mm -hmm. But I heard that, that one particular teacher, all it takes is one, mm -hmm. one negative mm -hmm. person, <clears throat> and 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 they walk into the teacher break room and just start talking about how bad it is, how what the bad behavior of the students are, and where you know things are at, and life is rough, and all of a sudden the whole room starts turning negative, and they all start talking about how bad life is, and all of a sudden they walk out defeated. But you let somebody come in there. And start talking about good things. Start talking about mission. Yeah. So one of the things that I did is this year I came back in and I pulled all my new, well, I pulled all of administration together, a lot of new people, and I made sure in our culture. See, here's the thing. If we're not careful, because I, I have, I deal with this, you know, in, in different areas. You know, they want me to know the culture. You know, because because we all our schools are Title One. We're in different areas. We're in the Metroplex. We serve a lot of um, um, low socioeconomic at-risk students in different areas. So uh, minorities, you know, for the most part, even in West Texas, that's that's the students that, that we have. And if we're not careful, we'll we'll because I have even sometimes my leaders, it's like, well, we gotta we gotta connect with our culture. I'm like, what about our culture? Are you gonna be a thermos thermostat? Or are you gonna be a thermometer? Yeah. Um, are you just going to go, well, here's what the wind of politics say. Here's what the, you know, the parents say. Here's what the, or are we going to set it and say, here's our culture. Here's who we are. This is our DNA. Right. This is where we're going. This is our mission. This is what we're called to do. And you set that thermostat and you move people toward that. Just it impacted our people so much that all of a sudden one of my one of my uh, district directors, assistant superintendent, uh, that, that's in, in the West Texas area is having trouble with a school, a lot of new people. They had like 50% turnover in, in teachers that year. And they're like, he's like, please, you gotta come and we gotta do a staff meeting and just because here's the other thing, you gotta know your history. See, you're in your soul, something happens for a Jewish person. And know their history. God designed it that way. So those feasts and everything that goes on, and then reminding themselves and passing that to those next generation, 
They know their history. I'm telling you, the number one thing the devil wants to do is rob our history. Yeah, yeah. Pollute it, rewrite it, yeah. jack it up. And, and listen, and history can be ugly as ugly can be. But bless God, we can learn from it. Let's just put it out there. However ugly it is. And let's deal with it. Life is lived in forward motion. We can't always go fix it. I've had all kinds of brokenness and betrayals and stuff. So your soul. Here's here's the the, the last one that, that I want to talk to you about. Man, I gotta really do this quick. In systems. How much time I got? Thirty seconds? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Here's, here's, here's the deal. Systems. Think about your makeup. You have a respiratory system, a nervous system. You are made up of systems. And systems deliver all of that out where it needs to go. You have to, in your organization, create good systems. Systems of communication. Systems of delivery. Systems are vital. Man. God bless you. I wish I had a few more hours. Uh, <laughs>